With winter around the corner, the holidays coming up, and maybe the need to escape reality for a little bit, come with me as I share with you my 10 favorite guitar-centric feature films. Hey, TAC family, and welcome to the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This is episode number 157, and the Acoustic Tuesday Show is your dose of focus, fun, and progress for your guitar journey. In fact, a little bit later today, you're gonna to be learning about a fellow guitar geek, Robert J, who was on cloud nine in his guitar journey, and then something happened, and he almost had to give up the guitar for good. But he didn't, and I'll tell you exactly why he didn't here in just a moment. First, let's jump into my 10 favorite guitar-centric feature films. And I have to tell you, this was a very difficult list for me to come up with. I was going to go online and do a bunch of research, and then I thought, no, I should just come up with the 10 guitar movies that just, just pop into my head, and then I'll share those with you, because those will easily be my favorites, right? Well, that's what I did, but don't worry, I went and did my due diligence later to get you the release date, the rating, and essentially come up with some reasons why I think you should watch it. So let's go ahead and dig into that list. Now, this is a list of my favorites, and I am doing this in a top 10, a true top 10, finishing with my most favorite movie. In fact, it is an acoustic guitar centric movie that is hilarious and I just have to say I could watch it every day for the rest of my life and I'd still laugh in all the same spots and probably some new ones as well. But let's start off with number 10. And coming in at number 10 is Walk the Line. Yes, the Johnny Cash story. This movie was released in 2005. It's rated PG-13, so not necessarily for the kiddos, but if they walk through the room while you're watching it, it'd probably be just okay. One song that would sum you up. That's the kind of song that truly saves people. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. Now, I, I chose this movie because I think it's the best of both worlds. You get the story of Johnny Cash, you get some great acting, plus the acoustic guitar is really the star of the show. Well, I guess Johnny Cash is, but you know, given Johnny Cash was mainly an acoustic player, uh, the acoustic guitar does take center stage. And you get to learn some awesome factoids and also just kind of the struggles that go along with being, well, a musician and one of that type of fame. The next movie on my list, coming in at number nine, is a little bit of a spoof off of Walk the Line. It's called Dewey Cox Walk Hard. And this is um, this has John C. Riley in it. It was released in 2000. Let me make sure I have my date right here. It was released in 2007. It is rated R, so this one is not for the kiddos. It's definitely in the comedy category. I don't know that thing. And what I love about this, this particular movie is that, yes, it's funny, and it has a lot of very cliche music type, type situations in it, but you get this really kind of funny walk through music history in, an, in a comedy setting, and it's pretty fun. Ironically, it's mildly educational as well, but I think the laughs totally win out on this movie, and that's certainly why it's on my list. The next movie, coming in at the number eight position, is none other than Crossroads. Yes, it stars the Karate Kid, Ralph Macchio, and it kind of is a, a retelling of the whole Robert Johnson story of him selling his soul at the Crossroads just for guitar skills, and I think the pinnacle scene of this movie is Ralph Macchio battling Steve Vai, Ralph Macchio obviously playing this, this young and budding blues guitarist, and Steve Vai playing the devil, uh, and they go into an actual guitar duel. Yes, indeed, a guitar duel. So this movie is certainly on my list. It was released in 1986. I put it in the classic category because it is a classic and you absolutely must see it. And um, it's, <laughs> it's one of those movies that Okay, it was released in 86, so you just take it with a grain of salt, but it is a fantastic movie, a must-watch. It is rated R. Uh, keep that in mind, but I think I think the kids could probably watch it, but use your, use your own judgment on that. But th these first couple of movies, the kids haven't been able to watch, but this next one, they certainly will. In fact, I was forced to watch this movie, but then so happy that I was forced to do that very thing. Coming in at the number seven position is Coco. Yes, the Pixar movie, released in 2017, rated PG. This is in the family category. And what I love about this movie, and again, I have to tell you the story of, of how I came to watch this movie. I'll do that in a second, but... 
They, this is a definitely a feel-good movie, and one of the things that I think is the huge takeaways from this movie, one of the huge takeaways from this movie, is the fact that it just shows how powerful music truly is. There's something that makes me different. Great, great grandfather, I want to be a musician just like you. This, this young man's drive to become an amazing guitarist leads him to a much larger life lesson, and it's, it's just a pretty cool watch. Now, I watched this last year on Halloween, and my whole goal on Halloween is to watch as many horror movies as possible. Well, we had some friends coming over, and the friends that were coming over weren't totally keen on horror movies, so they suggested we watched Coco because it kind of revolves around the Day of the Dead. Well, I uh, went ahead along with it, and I was so happy I did. It's a great movie, great one for the kids, especially if you have uh, a family full of maybe young and budding guitar geeks. Now, the next movie on my list, coming at the number six position, is a movie that has Jeff Bridges in it. It's entitled Crazy Heart. This movie, I think, is the best drama on the entire list. It's not the best movie on the entire list, but it's the best drama. This was released in 2009. It is rated R, not for the kids, but I have to say that between the story and the look inside a uh, struggling artist, I should say, one of the it, basically the movie is an artist who who had fame is now kind of falling from fame and trying to find his footing, doing the thing that he loves, but really struggling to do so. This ain't no place. That's one hell of a song. This is going to be your best year in the last seven. Uh, a great movie if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it and it's been a while, you should rewatch this one because it really is, uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic drama. Like I said, the best one on the list. Now this next movie, coming in at the number five position, is indeed a classic. It is rated R. It was released in 1980 and is entitled The Blues Brothers. Yes, indeed, The Blues Brothers. Uh, why should you watch this movie? Because it's a classic and because the list of credits looks more like an induction to the Music Hall of Fame than it does an actual movie with actors in it. You've got Aretha Franklin, you've got John Lee Hooker, I believe James Brown makes an appearance in this movie as well, amongst many, many, many others. <laughs> Each scene is incredible. I mean, also I should mention in the non-musical sense, but also in the musical sense, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. A, a, a comedy dynamic duo that um, this, this movie really touches my heart because it takes place in Chicago. A lot of references and a lot of familiar settings as well. Uh, now, before I get on to the final four movies, I want to know what your favorite guitar-centric feature film is. So in the comments below, please let me know what the movie is and why you chose it. Now, moving right along here, let's go to the number four position. And this is a movie that you probably have seen already and you probably will watch again because it is that good. Yes, coming in at number four is This Is Spinal Tap, released in 1984, rated R. It's in the classic category, but it could very well fall in the comedy category as well. This movie, you need to watch it simply because this movie goes to 11. Uh, there's no other reason to watch this movie. Actually, there's a ton of reasons to watch this movie. Um, it, it features, it, it is such a sarcastic look at the music industry as a whole, and it, it contains so many cliches and so many things that um, I think many, uh, maybe upper level bands take very seriously, but it's, it's set in a very comedic way in this movie. From the place where eardrums go to die, Come the living legends of rock and roll lunacy. This movie is funny time and time again. It is, it is truly timeless and a fantastic movie. Uh, one that, like I said, it needs to be on your list if it hasn't been on your list before, if you have not seen it yet. Maybe not so keen for the kids on that one, but again, if they walk through the room, I think it would probably be okay. There's a couple of scenes and a couple of references in there that wouldn't be okay. Just for those of you with a Guitar Geek family. We're on to the top three, and this next one was one I saw recently, and I thought, again, it kind of fits in that music cliche thing, but also is kind of like a mythical journey. 
with Jack Black and Kyle Gass. Yes, coming in at number three is Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny. This movie was released in 2006. It is rated R. It's in the category of comedy. And I put in the reason uh, for watching this, and I have to read this directly off my computer. Uh, Music mythology at its comedic best. It's like Odysseus went on a quest, but it was for a pick because he was a guitar geek. Now, this is definitely not one for the kids because it's definitely in the, um, uh, I can say, the kind of stoner comedy realm. <laughs> the greatest band on earth. Uh, <laughs> but it's funny nonetheless, especially if you're a guitar geek and especially if you've ever lost a pick in the dryer, or if you've ever attributed your amazing guitar skills to a pick that you didn't know where it came from, you just found it in your pocket one day and you thought, man, this pick is making me play so good. It kind of combines the Robert Johnson story a little bit with just overall music lore. It's a fantastic flick, a must watch. Now the next movie on my list also stars Jack Black. Coming in at the number two position is School of Rock, a family affair. Now this is rated PG-13, but I'm pretty sure all the kids could watch it and be okay. I think they'd miss some of the more adult references. Uh, this is in the family category. This was released in 2003, and I think I've watched it every Christmas since it was released. Uh, between the fact that Jack Black is hilarious, and between the fact that he's spreading his love of music to kids in this, in this school that he's actually Actually not supposed to be teaching at. But I think the underlying story is, is I believe it, it's his brother, I think, who's kind of grown up and assuming the grown up role. He's got married, he's got a job. And Jack Black's character continues to get him to try and tap into his former love of music. And his brother continually responds by saying, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm past that. I'm much more happy now with, with my, you know, with my life the way it is. But He's missing music, and it kind of comes to a culmination at the end, and I think it's so cool, and it's kind of a metaphor for, well, a lot of our journeys. Sometimes we let music take a back seat when it should be riding shotgun with us all along. I think it's time we started our new class project. Rock band. Can we tell our parents? No! Now, to the number one position. This movie that comes in at number one is hilarious. This movie that comes in at number one is in the classic comedy category. This movie that comes in at number one was released in 2003. It is rated PG-13, and it is, <laughs> the title is A Mighty Wind, and it's absolutely hilarious. And the reason it's my number one is because it revolves around folk music. And folk music is ripe for the pickings. No pun intended, but maybe pun intended as well. Uh, folk music is ripe for the pickings because I feel like the 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 artists or the iconic artists within the folk scene generally have a tendency or have had a tendency to take themselves very seriously, which makes the jokes in this movie keep coming and they hit hard. Uh, essentially, the movie revolves around them doing this, this uh, kind of concert to tribute one of the great folk record label owners of the time. And they're, it's kind of all of these folk bands, various ones have been uh, uh, trying to do various concerts and things, and they're trying to get the band back together. And they've all had pretty, pretty crazy life changes. So very interesting movie, very funny. And it also has some kind of historical significance. I think there's some loose references that you'll find appealing as well. Those are lights hanging up there? Yes, those are lights. Could they fall? And that's a ceiling above us. Excuse me, I must be full. <laughs> it's perfect. like that wire. I see a wire. I see it. Oh! Now, as I mentioned before, please, in the comments below, let me know your favorite guitar-centric feature film. I'd love to have a great list for all of us guitar geeks to watch uh, once you're through watching this episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Now, if you want a quick little recap of my list, uh, here it is. Number 10, Walk the Line. Number nine, Dewey Cox, Walk Hard. Number eight, Crossroads. Number seven, Coco. Number six, Crazy Heart. Number five, Blues Brothers. Four, Spinal Tap. This is Spinal Tap. That's actually the, the proper name. Number three, Tenacious D in the, pick of Destiny, uh, in the Pick of Destiny. Number two, School of Rock. And number one, A Mighty Wind, a classic Christopher Guest film. And uh, Eugene Levy is in it, and he is spot on. If you like Schitt's Creek, if you've been watching Schitt's Creek, and you're looking for more Eugene Levy in your life, go ahead and queue up Mighty Wind. You will not regret it at all. Okay, one of the things I want to do before we move on, I want to introduce you to Robert J. Robert J. is the guitar geek that I referred to at the very beginning, who had something 
borderline, well, tragic happen, and he persevered. And I'll tell you how. But first, you know, you might be wondering, how do these movies connect with my guitar journey? You know, the Acoustic Tuesday show is all about bringing you fun, focus, and progress. And watching movies doesn't seem like you'd be very focused on guitar. That's not true, but you do have to have fun on your guitar journey as well. And you can't play guitar 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I've tried, kind of. It just doesn't work out. It's hard to eat. It's hard to sleep. But what I want you to do is be okay with taking breaks from guitar, but do so in a way that still fills you with that joy that guitar brings. And if it happens to be sitting down with your family and watching a guitar-centric movie, that's a great way to spend your time because you're sharing your love of guitar with the people that you love the most. And ultimately, that's a pretty good feeling. And you'll never know if that movie you watch could impact your son or daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter, or just a friend that you invited over to watch the movie. So yes, these movies actually do impact your guitar journey. Now I want to introduce you to Robert J. Robert J is a fellow guitar geek of yours and a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member. In fact, you are the person who helped him continue to play guitar. Yes, you watching this show. I'm not even kidding. That's not just something I'm saying to get your attention. He actually calls out you in what he wrote here. Let me explain. Robert J has been around Tony's Acoustic Challenge for two years now, and on his second tack anniversary, he shared a quite uh, touching story, and one that I think will inspire you on your guitar journey. In fact, I had a chance to meet Robert back in 2019 at the Acoustic Life Festival, and it was great to see him in person. You know, I see him online, I see his profile picture, I see his name, and that just doesn't cut it. Seeing him in person was awesome, so uh, Robert J, if you're watching, uh, thank you for being just an incredible human being and an inspiring one at that and a great music lover he's got great taste in music in fact we talked about that at length at the acoustic life festival but here's what he wrote for a second tack anniversary. i asked him a couple of questions first where were you with guitar when you joined and he said this i was a lifelong musician and a four-time now five guitar player and student who never stuck with the instrument long enough I was a woodworker who had built an electric guitar, got hooked, then purchased and rehabbed an acoustic. I could manage a few basic chords, but was very rusty. The second question, what are three things you can do now that you couldn't do before Tony's Acoustic Challenge? I now have a comfortable grip on over 20 chords and the fretboard knowledge to slowly figure out anything I need. I've been reading sheet music since I was 10, pretty cool, and now I read tab nearly as well. Finally, my strumming is about a thousand times better than it ever was. And the third question, complete this statement. It would be amazing if this time next year I can play through multiple songs, John Prine, Tom Petty, Blaze Foley, Guy Clark, etc., in front of an audience and perhaps even sing at the same time. I want to play guitar with other people as often as I can forever, or as long as I can. In my mind, there's even a list of TAC members who I want to collaborate with, and songs for most of them. There's one member I've already talked to, and I'm almost ready. Now I have to just, there's a little bit more of his story here, and this is the part that you played a huge role in. And again, I'm not joking when I say you. You played a huge role in it. But one of the things that sticks out is Robert's positive attitude and his recognition of small wins. All along his journey, he's been able to recognize small wins, and he's able to look back and say, wow, my strumming is so much better. I can now read tab just as fluently as I can read sheet music, and that's huge because he's been reading sheet music since he was 10, and the only way he can do this is by showing up regularly and looking at those small wins whenever he's finished with his playing session for the day. So uh, great work using the TAC method for your guitar journey, Robert J. Uh, and it certainly has paid major dividends as this next story will actually indicate. So I'm gonna read this verbatim from the Tony's Acoustic Challenge forum here. He says, some may have noticed that I haven't been around very much. Newer members may have never seen me. I wasn't even sure I'd be writing this. Here's why. I left the Acoustic, Life, the Acoustic Life Festival in 2019 riding a guitar high like never before in my life. I met loads of really great pe people, played on stage, played my first big jam session, learned a lot, and had a blast. Did I mention that was the first time I had played in front of another human being? Two months later, I severed the nerves to my left thumb in a table saw accident. It took a long time to get back to playing, and it will probably hurt for the rest of my life. The mental issues were tougher. The first big step on the road back was a November trip to my first TAC Jam Club meeting, which was longish and one of the greatest decisions I will ever make. 
I will be forever thankful to Sharon T. and Dom T., lovingly referred to as Mama and Papa Tack, for opening their home to me for my entry to the Friends with Strings Jam Club. Just as important was Robert Carhart Jr. for providing world-class airport limo service and conversation. I think the whole trip was his idea anyway. Now check this out. This is, you know, Robert being really truthful and vulnerable here about his guitar journey and the fact that he pulled through and what he attributes that to. After the new year, things weren't always so rosy. There were days that my hand hurt and I wouldn't pick up the guitar. Usually my love of it and determination to play pushed me through. Like so many others, my wife lost her 14 year job when Pier 1 closed her store in late March. Other things have happened, but bad things have happened to a lot of people. The cancellation of the Acoustic Life Festival 2020 was a real gut punch. Tell me about it. I'm still kind of reeling from that. The Acoustic Life Festival is just a magical weekend, and to not have it this last year was really, really difficult, as, as he mentioned. But all the while, there have been slow improvements and occasionally some light bulb moments in my guitar journey. We've made the decision to live on my income alone, and adjustments have been made. I often considered not renewing my TAC membership as part of some belt tightening. I have learned so very much here and credit Tony and TAC with the majority of my success. He has laid the groundwork for continued improvement anywhere. That aside, what kept me here is this community and my desire to make music with and for them. I'm going to try to be around more. I miss this place. So thank you to everyone in the TAC community. You have often been the thing to keep me going. Now you're stuck with me for at least another year. And I really appreciate Robert sharing this with, with all of us uh, because I think it's so important to know that connecting with like-minded guitar geeks, guitar geeks that want the best for you just like you want the best for them, that is so crucial and really the keystone to your guitar routine. Having people to support you on your guitar routine is a, it plays a huge impact. It saved Robert. It saved Robert. He continued to play because of the people that he surrounded himself with through a very difficult series of events. One physical, but a lot of other mental things that he shared as well. And that's the thing that I want to stress here is that, you know, I think a lot of times, I know for me, when I got into guitar, I thought to myself, this is for me. I'm going to sit in my room and I'm going to play and I'm going to make cool sounds by myself. Nobody's going to hear them. This is solely for me. And I really that was complete ignorance at that point in time. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that I didn't yet tap into the happiness and joy that playing with other people would actually provide me. And it really provides a ton of fuel for your guitar journey as well. It helped me progress. Now, I'm not saying you have to join a band. I'm just saying being around other like-minded guitar geeks that share the same passion that you do to talk about gear, to talk about how difficult an F chord is, to talk about just kind of the, the ups and downs of your guitar journey. That is crucial. And as a Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, one of the cool things is you, you have that every day. You can log in and you're surrounded by people that have the same ideas as you, well, different ideas, but the same philosophy that they bring to their guitar journey. They wanna have fun, they wanna have focus, and they wanna experience progress day in and day out. And that's exactly what has driven Robert J. So I wanna thank him for sharing his story and also congratulate him on his second year at Tony's Acoustic Challenge. One of the things that, speaking of community, that was made really apparent to me was how powerful community is and how much love is shared even right here on the, on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I almost called it the Tony's Acoustic Challenge show. On the Acoustic Tuesday show, um, you know, this last couple of months, I had been at home uh, waiting for Emerson to arrive. Emerson is my son, and I uh, was here helping out Whitney. We were prepping the house and just kind of laying low and enjoying this, this last little moment of together time between her and I until Emerson arrived. Well, Emerson was born on September 15th, and shortly thereafter, I got this email from Summer, who's on the Tony's Acoustic Challenge team, and she said, hey, um, there's a couple of people that wanted to congratulate you, and she was lying to me. It was way more than a couple. It was about, uh, it was well over 100 people took the time out to send me a video message saying congratulations on Emerson's arrival. Like I said, he was born September 15th. He's doing great. Whitney's doing awesome. He's growing like a weed. Um, I couldn't be happier to share this with all of you and to just say thank you is almost, um, it seems like not enough. Um, really from the bottom of my heart, uh, sincere thanks to everyone in this community for all the well wishes, the congratulations. It's really humbling to 
uh, see hundreds of messages of congratulations from your fellow guitar geeks. So, so truly, thank you sincerely. Uh, my, I thank you. Whitney thanks you. Emerson thanks you. And it's been so cool to kind of have the family all together. Uh, Aiden just got a chance to meet Emerson via Skype uh, this last um last week, which was so cool. He was excited to meet his little brother. So um, just in an effort to share this with you, to, to, to show you some of the love that came my way, I wanted to share with you just a few of the congratulations messages that came through, just to give you an idea of how heartwarming it truly was. And again, thank you so much. Here's a couple of those messages. Yay! Congratulations. I'm dizzy. Congratulations on y'all's beautiful new baby boy and what a cool name Emerson Towns wow he's like sophisticated and laid back at the same time I'm David Garber from Red Bank New Jersey and wanted to give you huge congratulations on the birth of your son Emerson Towns my son Noah is out in uh, Bozeman as we speak uh, with the Visions program for two months. So we're hoping to get out there and maybe we can say hello to you all. Congratulations. He's a beautiful little boy. Hope to see him soon playing the guitar. Hey, Tony and Whitney, congratulations on the new addition to your family and to Emerson. I just want to say congratulations to you too, because you are going to have an amazing, magical, musical life. We hope everybody is doing really well and can't wait to see you again online. Hey, Tony and Whitney, this is Grandpa Paul. Congratulations on the arrival of Emerson Towns. Take good care of that little guy and someday you can be legendary grandparents too. Congratulations, Tony and Whitney, mostly Whitney, of course. But uh, congratulations, uh, adding a new life to this world is always a special occasion and uh, wish you both the best, and of course, uh, Emerson also. Congratulations on your new little bundle of joy. And what a lucky little guy he's going to be, too, because I know as soon as those little fingers are big enough to uh, grip a guitar, Tony's going to start to teach him how to play. Hey, Tony. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Aiden. Proud papa, proud mama, proud older brother. Congratulations on the birth of baby Emerson Towns. I know the four of you are gonna have a beautiful life together and make some beautiful music. Music is life, life is music. Be well, peace. Congratulations on your new little boy. It's a wild ride, enjoy the journey. This goes out to Tony P and his wife. Just wanna say congratulations on your latest miracle. You enjoy it, time goes fast. All right, peace out. This is Chris Lewandowski out of Wisconsin. Hey, Tony, Ian from the UK here. Congratulations to you both for letting the sleepless nights begin. So I'm sure you've got a baby-sized guitar lined up for him. And, of course, you need to buy him one for his 10th, his 18th, and his 21st birthday. So there you are, some excuses to buy some more guitars. Well, that wraps up the Acoustic Tuesday show for this week. I want to thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Let's go ahead and take a quick sneak peek and see what's going to happen next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Next week, we're going to be looking at a music town that is my favorite. It's south of Montana. I spent one week there, and I absolutely fell in love with this town. We'll be looking at 10 places to go in this locale, so bring your pen and pencil, or pen and paper, pencil and paper, whatever you write with, bring it, because I think you're going to want to take notes for this episode. Plus, you're going to learn about another guitar geek that is right alongside you on their guitar journey, and you get a chance to be inspired by them. Thank you so much for joining me today. As I mentioned, thank you for being a guitar geek, and remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube, and don't forget to say hi in the comments below. In fact, if you haven't mentioned your favorite guitar-centric feature film, go ahead and do that right now before you leave for today. Thank you so much. And again, thanks for being a guitar geek. Remember, guitar geeks unite, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Cheers. Mm -hmm.